I wanted to put together this quick review and feature comparison between the HT301 and HTI H8 thermal cameras because I couldn't find great info on them while I was trying to decide for myself which one might be best. The internet seems to love the HT301, and rightly so. For under $1,000, you get 384 by 288 thermal images at 25Hz in a convenient USB form factor, which is almost unheard of. Not that the device is cheap at about 760 US dollars, but resolution is pricey in this market, not to mention more than 9 frames per second. But dongle devices have their usability cons, and hardware specs don't tell the whole story, especially when something depends so heavily on software. I've had the FLIR 1 Pro for a long time, and regularly find myself wondering if a self-contained thermal imager might be more convenient for some of the things that I do. I definitely love something with a little more measurement flexibility. A few days ago was Prime Day on Amazon, and I noticed both of these devices had steep discounts, with the HT301 discounted about $160 and the HTI H8 on sale for $800 instead of $1000. I figured now was a better time than ever to make a move and maybe make this video. All in all, I want maybe like three specific things the FLIR 1 doesn't have. First, better resolution, so I can focus in on a circuit board I'm debugging and see what's actually going on without mostly guessing. MSX is helpful, and it makes this kind of work actually feasible despite the low resolution, but it's got serious limitations. Second, higher frame rate, or at least lower latency. Looking at the thermal scene from a moment ago makes it that much harder to correlate your work in the physical world with the information you're getting about temperature. Third, and this might even be a separate device, is grab-and-go convenience. I often find that I just need to spot check something, and even a low res and slow device would do, and I don't want to go find the dongle, plug it into my phone, and wait for the app to load and so on. One device to rule them all could work, and that's what we'll look into with the HTI H8, but if I need a crappy 60x60 handheld for this, that might also be fine. So first, let's see what the HT301 hype is about. The first thing I notice is that the software situation is mediocre. I had trouble finding and installing the official app, since the instructions only include a QR code and didn't mention the actual app name, and even once I did get there, it crashes the moment you try to take a video. Luckily, it's not total trash, and the measurements are somewhat flexible and entirely functional. One thing I immediately notice is that the video feed is fast and responsive with almost no latency, and automatic high-low measurements track the actual points in the video plenty quick. They won't keep up with a whip pan, but then what kind of thermography is that anyway? And while it's not totally flawless, a third-party app called ThermViewer brings a lot of additional functionality to the table. Again, I had trouble here and couldn't install the app directly from the website, but using a desktop to copy it to Google Drive first did the trick. ThermViewer adds in a bunch of image processing options and non-uniformity correction, thermographic data output in the form of a CSV saved with each image capture, and maybe most important of all, functional video capture. Now, what about the HTI H8? It's also 384 by 288 and 25 hertz, so basically they put the same sensor with all its nice features and performance in a self-contained handheld package, right? No, unfortunately not even close. Where the HT301 is fast and responsive, the HTI H8 is like a second and a half behind on the action. While the HT301 requires a third-party app for working video, the H8 doesn't do video at all. The H8 has the same basic high-low center measurements of the 301, but none of the more advanced ones. And because the main processor is so slow, the measurements it does show are from many frames ago. Good luck using the trigger to take an image without shaking the measurements off their marks, because I couldn't manage it. Unfortunately, the image capture is exactly what you see on the screen, so even if the measurements haven't caught up to the image, that's how they get saved. But let's talk a little bit about what you might actually use this thing for, especially since it advertises electronics work. Can you use it for circuit board debugging? Well, kinda? You saw earlier how I had the HT301 clamped in a gooseneck. That isn't exactly a designed-in feature, but it's so small and light that with just a cell phone tripod clamp and a little spacer and a USB-C extension, you can kind of put it anywhere you like and fiddle with the phone where it won't shake the camera. Not only aren't you going to clamp this massive thing in a movable gooseneck, it doesn't even have a quarter 20 screw to mount it on any kind of tripod. I suppose I could 3D print an Arca Swiss adapter to slot the handle in, but let's be honest, I'm not going to. But that brings us to another point, which is that even if you could mount the H8, it would still let you down. You might have noticed with the stock 13mm lens on the 301, I was able to get pretty close to a PCB, filling up the image with it. I could actually get even closer, because the lens can completely unscrew from the mount. I suppose that means you could get as close a minimum focus as you wanted with a 3D printed extension tube. But even unmodified, you can get about 8cm from the subject, which is a field of view about 2.5cm wide. 
definitely useful for PCB debug. The H8 has a minimum focus distance of 24 centimeters, which is a field of view 11 centimeters wide. That's better than a FLIR 1, but only barely. Finally, the H8 has the potentially killer feature of a Wi-Fi interface, but once again, HTI's complete lack of attention to software turns what could be a total redemption into absolute frustration. The web UI puts immense strain on an embedded system that can't even keep up with basic functionality, giving us a video feed a full 1.5 seconds behind reality, which actually doesn't even look so bad considering the full second latency of the built-in display. With just basic control over image capture and no way to mount the camera anyway, the web UI has almost zero utility over handholding. I guess it gives you a hacky workaround to record thermal video, but like, really? It also offers access to the images you've taken with the device, but I had even worse luck here. They all load simultaneously, and somehow, despite being tiny, take roughly an eternity. My only real success was the first time I tried, and even then there was only one saved image. This actually got a little bit better for the video that I recorded on my laptop, but I think that's because I'd already loaded all of the images once anyway. So where does that leave us? Well, I wish the software were better, and maybe had some scientific options like plotting key measurements over time, or more advanced region of interest drawing, but the HT301 is actually useful for my purposes, so I'll hold on to it. Maybe I can build on some of the great open source work that's already been done, and put together some of the experiment measurement type things I'm looking for on either Linux or Windows. But the H8 is kinda useless for my purposes, and I imagine most of yours, so fortunately for my wallet it's going straight back to Amazon. On the plus side, maybe now you'll get to see a video review of one of those cheaper 9Hz handhelds as I try to satisfy my grab and go needs. For now, I just hope this helped you make an informed decision on one of these two units.